Hydration and fueling strategies are a crucial aspect of racing any triathlon, no matter the distance, but especially so the longer those races become. And just as important as the strategy for the what and when to drink is the one that you have in place for how to do it. And that means having a plan in place for how to transport your chosen drinks or fluids on race day. So today I'm going to talk you through all the various options that are available for transporting your hydration, regardless of the equipment options that you have available, so that you stay properly hydrated all day long. Okay, so let's strip this right back to basics and then we can work to the more complex options later in the video. But let's assume for your first triathlon, you're gonna be using a regular road bike, much like one of these here. Um, many of you will have done that or certainly gonna be doing, myself included, when I was a junior. Now there's three basic options on one of these bikes for storing your hydration. The first of those are the regular water bottle cages, bosses or mounts that you have on the frame. Almost every bike like this will come with two sets. You're gonna have one on the seat tube and then you're gonna have the other on the down tube. Now, some more tri-specific frame sets might only have one of those on either of those two options. Um, and I'll come to that a little bit later. Now, clearly there are various race distances available for you to take part in, but the longer those go, the more important that your hydration and fluid storage options become. Now, if you are starting out, then the most obvious option is that um, bottle cage or um, bosses like I've just talked about and if you're just starting out with a sprint or an Olympic distance race I would suggest that one bottle is always going to be enough obviously weather and heat conditions are going to dictate how much fluid you want to carry in that bottle and then it's up to you where you decide to put it you've obviously got the option here on the down tube or on the seat tube usually people want to put it here that would be my option but that comes down to personal preference and just practice makes perfect depending on which place you want to put it and then moving on to perhaps what would be a slightly more advanced or more experienced option is what we call between the aero bars and this is what you can see up here. When I was racing as a junior on a road bike with clip-on aero bars just like you can see here, this is actually the setup that I like to do for non-drafting types of races with this bottle here in between the clip-on aero bars. If you've got a tri-specific bike which has got a more integrated flat cockpit with a base bar then you might have a slightly different setup but we'll get onto that in a minute. But these are just much, much easier because you forced to drink. The fluid is literally right there under your nose. You've got the straw pointing up at you and it just makes it that much more easy to be consistent with your drinking. We know that a good hydration strategy is one that is consistent. So if the roads are technical or the weather is poor and you don't want to remove your hands from the handlebars, then there's every chance that this type of setup will be much more comfortable and easy to manage regularly. And these hydration systems are generally set up in a way that makes it easy to refill these bottles on the fly, meaning you can collect a water bottle from an on-course aid station and simply squeeze the contents into your chosen system, like this one here, as you continue to ride. So there's no need to stop and waste precious time. In addition to that vertical loading bottle, there's also a horizontal option if you prefer, like this one here, which is also an additional aftermarket option that can equally be refilled on the go. And alternatively, some athletes prefer to affix their own regular bottle cages between the aero bars, simply using cable ties or similar, allowing them to place normal water bottles into that between the arms space. And thirdly, the final option is what is called the rear behind the saddle option. As you can see these here. Now these are usually attached to the rails of the saddle in one way or another. Um, we've got two bottle option here, but you could have a solo option as well. Now these admittedly are a little bit more of an advanced option. They sit there behind the saddle so that they're behind you when you're riding. So they're shielded from the wind. It's certainly a lot more aerodynamic option, but it does involve quite a bit more of a process getting used to reaching around and pulling that water bottle out of these cages in an easy and safe manner so that you can get your bottle and drink from it. Now, the main problem with these is they can often be affectionately referred to as a bottle rocket. They have a tendency to be able to eject if you hit a bump or a pothole in the road. So you have to have a nice easy way of keeping them affixed into the bottle cages. A nice little hack is to have some elastic bands that wrap around the top of the water bottle from somewhere else on the cage. So that should keep them nice and snug. Now I will admit I didn't really ever use this option too much because I race a lot here in the UK and our road surfaces are very terrible. But that is definitely a really nice way to stay aero. Right then, so if you're a little bit more aerodynamically minded and want a more advanced option to what I've already discussed, then I've got a couple of what I'll call hybrid alternatives for you just now. And the first of those is this aero water bottle cage that I've got here on the bike. Now these are slightly different to the regular round water bottles that we've already been discussing because they're a little bit more sleeker and the main difference is that they come with their own specific cage. That means that you cannot then discard that water bottle at an aid station perhaps and then hope to refill it with another bottle 
like you could do with a regular cage and a regular round water bottle. So you do have to be mindful for that because that's the only bottle that you've got on your setup if you choose to use it. So that means that they're perhaps more suited to shorter racing when you don't need as much fluid or perhaps as I used to use them for, filling those with your gels and mixing them up with a little bit of water so you can use that to sip on throughout the entirety of the race. And as a quick note before I go on to discuss the more advanced options, there is actually another hybrid worth bringing up. Because something like the Speedfill water bottle is a unique hybrid between the regular bottle on the frame and the internal and integrated bladders that I'll move on to shortly. Essentially, it's a larger frame shaped bottle that fills the space in a frame in a more aerodynamic fashion with a long straw for drinking running from that which will then attach to your cockpit area. This itself can then be refilled on the go. One final example that's also available for this hybrid section, depending on the frame set you have, is this type of semi-integrated hydration option. Now this acts as an excellent go-between from the basic between the arm solutions I've already discussed and the fully integrated top-of-the-line models I'm just about to show you. You can fill in the go, plus it has a handy flexible straw that snaps out of the way with the use of magnets, meaning it's not quite as distracting as the other straw options we've looked at so far. Right, so we have covered the basic options for storing your hydration on both a road bike and on the tri-bike, and I've also given you some alternatives that I would call a hybrid solution as well. And all of these work extremely well, but with the advancement of frame technology in recent years, you're now starting to see a whole new breed of tri-bikes as well. And you don't have to look very far in transition area to see a number of bikes that are like this, which have internal hydration storage solutions. So what exactly are we talking about? Well, it is essentially a redesign of the frame that allows your storage, allows you to store hydration within the frame itself. Now the upshot of this is it removes the need for all those bolt-ons that I've just been talking about previously. And that means that you're presenting less equipment to the wind, which means that you should be going faster because your surface area will be reduced. And the specifics of these types of internal solutions will vary from brand to brand, obviously, but essentially there's two types of options. The first of those being an internal bladder that will generally sit behind the cockpit or in the down tube area. And then the second option will usually be um, situated behind the saddle and behind you as the rider with a longer straw that's piped through the down tube and also popping up in the cockpit area for you to easily drink from, just as the um, first option that has the bladder situated in the down tube. Now in both these instances, I would suggest it's probably better to keep water in these bladders because that just keeps cleaning and uh, um, hygiene point of view a lot more simple. But of course you can put energy drink in there, just be more mindful that that's going to require quite a lot more cleaning after you use it. But clearly the reason that you might have bought one of these top-end tri-bikes is because you can use those internal hydration strategies and the aerodynamic qualities that come with it. But that's not to say that you couldn't still have one of these rocket ship type frame sets and just do the old school bolt-on regular water bottle cages that I talked about previously. And indeed I used to see that quite regularly in the transition racks of the pros, proving that sometimes it is just as easy to go for the perhaps more old school method. So it is clear that there are a number of ways to approach this hydration storage conundrum when you are racing. But the most important thing is that you need to be able to do it easily and be comfortable with the approach that you decide to take. Because if you're not, then the chances are that you're probably not going to be drinking often enough. And then that means that your hydration is not going to be good enough, meaning any gains that you've got from the aerodynamics that you've chosen are going to be lost out the window because of the poor hydration. So essentially you need to be comfortable using what you have and remember what I said at the top of the video, practice does make perfect. But please let me know what you opt for when your hydration setups, please drop them in the comments below. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, so please get that thumb up like button a hit and don't forget to subscribe to get all of our other content.